Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of the UX Connect. This is the 13th time we've done this, and we're still really nervous, but I'm Jorge Simons. I'll be your host for today. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation about UX, and uh, we have a very important guest with us right now. But before that, we have a paid announcement by the UX Connect. I'm kidding. Uh, you need to visit the UXConnect.com to find great content, video on demand for every case study, uh, do-it-yourself infographic if you are a UX enthusiast, and if you want to try to implement uh, some some of the insights we've gathered. You can check out the full reports uh, discussing every single piece of our UX research and plans for implementation. So there's no excuse to delight your users with good interfaces and an amazing experience. So let's go ahead and uh, introduce our design team first. Uh, back for a new episode is Miguel Medina. Miguel Medina is one of our web designers and UX researchers. Welcome back, Miguel. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, it's great to be here. And we are very excited to present all the findings in this new case study. Yes, we are. And next up is Diana. Diana's been here forever. She's a visual designer superstar. She actually, she actually sent me a specific color for the uh, small logo you see on the part below. So it's her orange. Thank you, Jorge. Yeah, I'm be here forever, and I'm very. Very, very excited and happy to be here today. And all the people who is watching this episode, don't go anywhere because we have a lot of cool uh, insights and feedback for Sales Caddy. So thanks for watching. The guys have been working hard. Uh, we're, I'm excited to present the new member of the uh, or design team. He is a new member to the UX Connect. We didn't. We really just said like, Arturo, do you know the UX? Connect? Yes, I want to be part of it. So we're letting him be here today. Uh, he's been of great help. His name is Arturo Ruiz. He's also a really talented Pokemon trainer. Welcome back, Arturo. Hi guys. Um, I'm pretty excited to be here. Uh, this is my first episode, uh, and I, I'm always been a classic fan of the UX Connect. So I'm great. Plug. I'm really glad to be part of the team right now. So now you're part of the team. No more closet. So. Woo. Okay. Uh, and last but definitely not least, one of the most important parts of our show today is uh, John Copeland. He's the CEO and founder of Sales Caddy, and we're we're going to give the mics to you, figuratively speaking. Uh, so you can tell us a bit about your role and uh, what Sales Caddy does for the, for your users. Sure. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, really excited to uh, get some good advice about UX. So Sales Caddy is an iPad-based sales enablement tool that gives reps more time to sell and all the answers that they need when they need them the most. Uh, my job here, obviously, as founder, I lead product promotion and business development, and I have a team of developers who are waiting, ready and waiting to uh, put some of these recommendations uh, into, into action. Well, that'll be great. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stay, hang with us for the next 10 to 15 minutes, and you're going to see a lot of interesting information. So let's kick it off uh, with asking the, our traditional question, which is, uh, why did you guys choose this particular uh, design method called heuristic evaluation uh, for sales caddy? Yeah, uh, we choose a heuristic evaluation, and I thought you will be more enthusiastic and dramatic when you pronounce heuristic because I yeah. thought you one of your favorite methods. It, it was the it was the <laughs> first episode I was in uh, the heuristic evaluation back in like 2014. So I'm I'm gonna do it excitingly next time. I promise. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well. Uh, we choose uh, heuristic evaluation because, uh, first of all, it helps to identify usability problems in the user uh, interface. And also, uh, it helps you to detect and reduce the number and severity of design errors. So when we started our research uh, as a team, we decided to uh, look for a method that will help us to uh, evaluate and identify usability problems. And the heuristic evaluation is great because it follows the 10 principles of usability. So we decide that it will be um, uh, the, one, the one method to, to do a research. But also, uh, we, chose, uh, we choose this method because um, it uh, provides a global panorama about the weaknesses and the strengths of the system. So we did the, uh, the evaluation. So you have like 10 preset uh, UX principles, and you compare and contrast that to the user interface of Sales Caddy. And that's not all. You actually went outside. You thought outside the box and started talking to users to see if that information was correct, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it, that was, I want to say that. Uh, we uh, also interview 
uh, different real users, only with the purpose to see if our findings from the heuristic matches with the, their feelings. And the answer uh, is yes. Uh, a lot of the things that we found from the heuristics uh, matches perfectly with the feelings of the users. The things that they delight most and the things that they make them frustrated uh, matches perfectly. So today we are going to present, um, first of all, uh, the global results. Uh, here in the chart, maybe it's a little, um, I don't know, technical or it's not <clears throat> super visual um, attractive, but we are going to move quickly from this chart to see the improvements that we are suggesting. So here we have the 10 principles that I already uh, explained. And we have the four main opportunity areas for SELSCADI in these uh, 10 principles. Uh, we have the errors, uh, the memory, the information, and the visual system. So let's move to uh, each of these uh, different principles with the uh, uh, feedback. So who wants to start? I think I'll start. Uh, the first one is people make errors and mistakes. So we can see in the chart that we have four of three questions that went uh, highly uh, with critical um, uh, feedback from the heuristic. And the severity range is kind of high. So the reason uh, of this is the console is not prepared for errors or not does it prevent the user when they're having uh, a mistake. So I'm going, I, I would like to uh, show you guys some uh, some examples. Uh, we have um, we we kind of uh, have an ad user uh, model. So here we can see uh, the fields in which uh, users can type all kind of information, and the system validates that information. So you can you can uh, write whatever you want, and it will create that user, even though that's not valid information. So what we want to to improve here is to have a, a kind of a feedback letting the user uh, know where they are making the mistake while typing that information. So in the right panel, we have um, an example. Uh, an email is uh, typed wrong, so the, the console gives them feedback that that's not a valid email, so please try it again, and then allows the user to create that, um, that user instead of just uh, creating the user with the wrong information. Yeah, so, and, and this is a way to prevent the error, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what we tried to do. And um, the second one is human memory is complicated. So at first, we have lots of information displayed at once. So the user have trouble finding what they want. So what we are proposing, uh, and we want to show here in the mock is uh, we want to group all the related information, for instance, device users. Uh, all related to device users will be there, all the tasks, and this will prevent the user to uh, cut the task flow they are having. So if they want to create a user concerning device user, that's where they're going to find the information. And if they want to uh, know something about console users, all that kind of actions will be there, and they won't have to search for them or remember where they are. So all are um, created in groups. So I was I was going to say uh, it's it's about not trusting the user, but I think it's the other way around. It's simplifying the way around the user, so they don't have to worry if they uh, I don't know misspell their name or who would misspell their name, right? But but write their email uh, incorrectly. So the 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 interface would tell them, hey, your email is wrong. And, and instead of the user having to go away from his regular task flow, they can find all the single user information, for example, in a single place with some visual clues and stuff like that. So OK. Yeah. Um, also, uh, it's a beautiful interface. I, I'm very proud of that because I think this very um, uh, bright and all the things come pop up. But we'll explain more about this in in short, uh, the theory heuristic that we found uh, opportunity areas for uh, cell study is related with the information. And this heuristic is uh, called uh, people crave information. And here, uh, here's the thing. Uh, 
uh, people wants to feel in charge of, of, of uh, the things that they are doing. For example, here right now I'm talking with John, with Arturo, Miguel, Jorge, and the people from the audience. So I expect that if I'm talking, uh, see at least a gesture from, from Arturo, maybe his head or, or the hands or, or Jorge. So if we're having a conversation, I want to um, have in the same channel and receive some feedback from you. It happens the same with the system. If a user do an action, uh, he wants to, to know that the action is uh, uh, doing and receive some feedback. For example, in the next mock-up, we have the, when a user creates um, a new user in the console, a little message uh, appears and say that uh, you, you, your user has been successfully created. That's the way to let know the user that the things that uh, he or she is doing in the console, it's uh, taking action. And it's the way that communicate between the system and the user. Also, this heuristic is about to help them when they have problems. For example, uh, we are proposing to add in the left uh, main menu a section for help. Do you need help? There is. And this section will, should contain the most common questions that the IT department receives every day. So in that way, uh, the users can click on it and read uh, the most common questions and have some answers. And that's the, the way that we are proposing to solve um, some, of the re some of the findings that we got from this heuristic. The last of the opportunity areas that we're discussing uh, is the visual system. Uh, this heuristic is all about how the information is displayed around all the console and how they make use of a graphical language to represent this information. Uh, we take uh, three major highlights uh, around this heuristic. The first one is icons and graphics. Um, Right now, uh, the console doesn't have any graphics or icons uh, or any way to represent the information they display around the console. Uh, it's just a sea of plain text. And the only four icons that are aren't there on the tables, um, they're really hard to translate in what they actually do or what they actually mean. Uh, the next one is hierarchy and color coding. Uh, right now, the hierarchy of the information of the console is confusing, uh, making more relevant information to be confused with the information that is not so important. Um, grouping similar information helps the user to focus on a single task instead of surfing around the, all the information that is scattered all on all the console. Um, also, the application doesn't take advantage of color system or color coding to represent different status of interactions, for example, error message or success messages. Um, on the following screenshot, uh, we can see the, the interface uh, consists mostly on plain text. and the color coding is actually is, is not there. And the last one, and here I'm quoting, I think in a quote of some of the users that we interviewed, uh, it says that the position of the form fields as well as the language used in the console are odd. The next point is the technical language. Uh, the information displayed uh, right now on the console is, is in a technical language. It, it's important directly from a database. And most of the labels and most of the, of the, tab of the information of the tables are are in this way. So for us, it's pretty difficult to understand what's, what was going on, well, how to interpret this, this information. So um, the, this way, uh, we, we get confusion for the users because they don't really understand what's, what that information means or how, how to work with that. Um, on the next uh, mock-up that we see there, uh, we, we can see that we um, are proposing to make use of some color coding to represent some uh, important um, inputs on, on, on the interface. For example, the configure columns buttons or even the support ticket that is actually kind of missing on the uh, actual console. Um, and as I said before, um, there are areas where the application can take advantage of a graphical system. For example, uh, right now the application displays the location as a set of coordinates, which most of the users can understand. Come on, who's this word can really uh, understand uh, coordinates? Even Boy Scouts has a hard time uh, interpreting this, this, this kind of stuff. So uh, we're proposing the use of a graphical system for this, like a map. A map is, uh, is something that most of the users can understand, and they can easily translate this to, uh, to something useful. I can understand maps, though. I need 
maybe coordinates and then a map and then a... I a have a friend that maybe over. knows how to translate <laughs> the coordinates, I think. Yeah. We need classes from your friend. <laughs> so, so it seems like it's, it's in a way, uh, guiding the user through feedback in every step of the way, having it color coded so they can know what's more relevant to them and what's not. And again, not trusting the user. Kidding. <laughs> so, in a way, anyway, uh, th th this is my favorite part of the show because after all the information, because we're, we're making it hard on John uh, because we're getting his feedback. Now we have four takeaways uh, before we go to ask questions to you. So. Just in the in the issue of fairness, we're gonna try to summarize it up again uh, in four in, in four small takeaways. So go ahead, guys. So the first one is error prevention and people make mistakes. So as was uh, explaining before, uh, what we're trying to to do here is to prevent uh, the user or give them give them the means to uh, correct that mistake that they are having at the time, uh, but mainly to prevent it. So. We want to have that on this um, console. Yeah, and you can help them with uh, uh, small uh, pieces of feedback, and you can prevent a lot of, of mistakes. Um, the second takeaway, it's about uh, minimize the user memory load by making the objects, actions, and options more visible. And this is about uh, how you organize the information as we see it in the mockups. We are proposing to have um, all the information related with device users in a single tab with their own uh, buttons in the same place. So this is also about the uh, use the color in our favor, in our advantage, and make these uh, icons and these graphs uh, come more pop up. Um, the third uh, takeaway is about the visibility of system status, provide clear feedback to users. And this is about the, I already explained it. Uh, if I'm talking to you guys today, I want to see your faces, I want to see your eyes, your mouths, your arms. It's the same with the, with the system. The users want to know what is happening and if their actions, uh, it's um, uh, in some way to communicate it with the system by uh, feedback messages. And these feedback messages, it could be in different um, ways, with color, with uh, side phones, with uh, uh, small icons, and uh, I don't know, some translations. So um, this is uh, super important, and it's crucial to uh, make the users feel connected and build a trust, um, a, a trust uh, channel with the system and the user. And the last one is use everyday language. Uh, we're not robots yet, so technical language is pretty difficult for us to understand. Um, using an everyday language is the best way for the users to understand what's going on right now in the application or even how to use the application. Uh, for example, uh, the recycle bin on our computer resembles a real life trash can, which is a place that you put the things that you don't need or you have to to dispel. So uh, using the kind of metaphors around the application make the user feel more familiar with what they're doing. I just, Arturo, Arturo's comments are like the greatest, like he has hope for the future when we're all robots, but okay. So now let's go back to John. Uh, I know it's a lot of information, but do you have any feedback or we could use questions, anything we can help you with right now? Actually, guys, this is great. Um, what I really appreciate uh, from your efforts and from what you provided today is you've helped us to really prioritize something that uh, we just haven't been able to get from our, our, our key administrative users. And just as a reminder to everybody uh, who's watching, this is the console. This is what the, the business owners inside a corporation use to uh, share, to, to watch utilization and to help administer all of the field-based users. And this is an enterprise system, so that's a little context. Um, these are all points that are painfully um, needed and clearly uh, clearly needed. The way you've presented it, though, is really helpful because you've prioritized it. Uh, you've explained a lot of the, the real reasons for uh, the need to improve user experience in these areas. And what I really appreciate is you've given us a short top four things to attack. Uh, and so we can get right at it. So that, that's my first reaction. Great. Uh, is, do you see this uh, as coming alive in the next design iteration? Do you think this is something you, you guys are going to use? 
absolutely. This is I have a list of tickets a mile long. You know, product requests, uh, changes uh, to the to the UI. But we wanted to get some professional advice from a UX clinic and Nearsoft before we just started diving in, fixing random things that caught our eye. This gives us uh, a runway, and so we'll we'll put this into the next version. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, any last questions you want to ask John? Or John, any last questions you want to ask the design team? Or should I just say goodbye? Uh, well, I just want to thank to all my, my teammates here. And Marisol, we miss you. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to thank to all the participants, uh, for the four users that uh, we had uh, interviews with them. Uh, their feedback was a super um, a professional. They help us a lot also with, uh, with the findings. And that's it. I just want to thank to John to the opportunity uh, to be here in the UX clinic. It was amazing to work with the sales caddy. So thank you so much. Well, it's a, thank you. It's a real uh, pleasure to work with the Nearsoft team and be a part of UX clinic. Again, I also want to thank our, our users. Uh, again, this is enterprise software. And getting usability testing from them is really quite a feat. I'm amazed that we got uh, as many testers as we did and very grateful for the people who took time out of their busy days. Of course, your team included, but also our customers uh, to come together and provide this really valuable feedback and uh, something that's actionable, something that's going to make a difference with our product. So we're going we're gonna to have to sign you up uh, on the next chapter of the UX to see how the changes went and, and everything went down. <laughs> I think that would be great. I'll take as much free advice as I can get. <laughs> <laughs> that was. We're gonna quote you on that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, guys, that's that's our show for today. Uh, it was great having you on board, John, and the whole design team. I want to thank the audience too, who was here with us, and especially Bunny. Bunny is always off camera, but he's always making everything happen. So, claps to him. And just, I just like to remind you that uh, making a delightful user. Centered world. It's all about making money, to be honest. And and this this feature is that you can change on your product will probably make you more and more money. So we're in the business of making great companies, great software for great users, and and the end money. So <laughs> send us a, a request at contact at the uxfinite.com or through the uxfinite.com website, and we'll be happy to feature you in a upcoming episode of the UX Clinic. So thank you guys, and we'll see you in three weeks' time for a new episode of the UX Clinic. Goodbye. Bye, thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>